is Fox 23 News at 6.30. Buried alive. This one is a dear a ghost story. A Damaris Scott, a man is looking for the truth, he says, in a legend that has haunted the town since 1882. In this week's Deer Ghost Stories, Jana Barnello details the mystery of Mary Howe. A good ghost story usually involves a dark and stormy night. In Damariscotta, a stormy day will have to do. After over 100 years in an unmarked grave, has Mary Howe finally found peace? Or does her angry spirit still haunt the community that may have buried her alive? Greg Latimer doesn't really write ghost stories. He investigates them. In his book, Haunted Damariscotta, Chapter 1, is dedicated to Mary Howe. She would channel uh, ghosts, have seances, make future predictions, and she also specialized in going in trances. The legend goes Mary Howe, a medium, went into a trance so deep in December 1882, a doctor declared her dead. And many townspeople believed she was buried alive. What worse nightmare, nightmare could there be than, than waking up six feet under in a, in a box? Latimer is now trying to find truth in the nightmare. Whether Mary was in fact buried alive is still a mystery. And so is the location of her grave. That's what we're trying to find out. To help find out, Latimer will dig through history, a big part of which happened here at the old Howe House, where current tenants are still afraid of the third floor. She flew down the stairs, I guess. Mary did. Yep. They used to do seances here. Beyond buildings, Latimer is looking at records. This is the diary of Minnie L. Hopkins. This diary holds clues. December 20th, 1882, she writes, Mary Howe has been dead since the 12th, and now they think she is not dead. Latimer says this proves Mary's death was controversial, and from the diary's daily weather reports, the ground wasn't frozen yet. See here on December 18th, it was a perfect day, warm and lovely. So that's an important first step because if the ground had frozen hard and she was buried on some other date, that would change the whole dynamics of the investigation. Latimer will spend the winter digging through documents that he hopes will lead to one of two places. For, for most locals, including some descendants I've talked to, um, believe this is the cemetery where uh, Mary Howe is. But not Latimer. So it's not a very private place to do it. He thinks rather than the Glidden Street Cemetery in Newcastle. Mary's grave is more likely in the more secluded, more discreet Glidden Cemetery on River Road, also in Newcastle. If she's at a cemetery with the name Glidden on it, this would be the one. That's pure speculation. We need to go dig up some facts to uh, back it up. Facts he fears are lost to time. So maybe he should look to legend for answers. This is a ghost story, after all. But perhaps it is the sensitivities of dogs that best herald the location of Mary's remains, for it is said that any dog setting foot on Mary over Mary's body will raise its head to the sky and emit a long, lonesome howl. Jana Barnello. And with that, we put the children to bed. Fox 23 News, Dan Rascada. Hmm. By the way, if they do find Mary Howe's grave, Latimer does want to hold a fundraiser. They hope to get a headstone for her if they find the grave. He and his wife are looking for any descendants as well, maybe of the Damaris got a town clerk at the time, mm -hmm. the sheriff at the time, even the doctor who, in fact, declared Mary Howe dead. No, well, they, I guess they hope that they can provide some answers to this mm -hmm. mystery. We do have their contact information on our website. You'll find that at WGME.com. Always like a good ghost story. Especially this time of year.